Hi everyone, I am Gaurav and in this video, I will tell you about different rate limiting algorithms. The first step of designing a rate limited application is to know different rate limiting algorithms. I will tell you about different rate limiting algorithms, how each of them work and the pros and cons of each algorithm. So stay tuned till the end. Imagine you have an application hosted on the internet and people are using your application to submit some request and they get some result in return. Now one day you wake up to see that your application has crashed. The reason? Your application received too many requests. And these requests were not even from genuine people. These were from spam accounts. Now this type of attack to bring your system down using spam request is called DOS attack. DAW stands for denial of service. One of the ways you could have prevented your application from going down is by making use of something called rate limiters. As the name suggests, rate limiters are used to control the rate of incoming traffic from a certain user or from a certain source. It can be from a certain IP address as well. So if you had used a rate limiter in front of your application, chances are that your application would still have been working. Almost all APIs published by large tech companies enforce some kind of rate limit. For example, X, or formerly known as Twitter, had a rate limit of 300 tweets for 3 hours. You cannot post more than 300 tweets in 3 hours, and this is per user. Similarly, Google Docs APIs have the default limit of 300 requests per user in 1 minute. Now, rate limit is also used if you want to expose a trial version of your application, you don't want the person trying your application to actually use your services, but to just get a taste of how your output looks like. In that case, also rate limiters are used. For example, for trial users, you can set that per user, they can't use more than one request per day. So that's where rate limiting applications are used. The token bucket is a very common rate limiting algorithm used by many of the big companies. For example, companies like Amazon and Stripe use this algorithm to throttle the requests based on a certain criteria. To understand token bucket algorithm, assume that you have a bucket and assume that I want to design a rate limiter which allows three requests per second. Now in this bucket, I fill three tokens. The capacity of this bucket to accommodate tokens is three. If I try to put any more token into this bucket, the token will just fall off. Like the bucket can't have more than three tokens. Now I also have a pipe and this pipe sends token to this bucket at the rate of three tokens per second. Now assume a request comes in. My logic is for the request to pass, it should pick up a token from this bucket and it should go to my service. So once this request came in, it saw a token was present. So the request took the token and it was allowed to go to the service. Now assume a new request comes in. Let's call it request two. It took this token and it was allowed to go to the service. Now two more request comes in. Let's call them request three and request number four. Since there is only one token left in the bucket, since request 3 comes in first, it picks up the token and it is allowed to go to the service. But for request 4, since there are no tokens left in the bucket, we drop this request. Since this algorithm is an analogy that uses token and bucket, we call it token bucket algorithm. Now this pipe will replenish the tokens every second. So once one second passes, three new tokens enter this bucket and any more request that wants to come in can take the token and serve the request. This is the basic idea behind token bucket algorithm. Now let's look at how to implement rate limiter in our system. I will create a flowchart showcasing the algorithm. So I have my rate limiter here. This big box is my rate limiter and inside it we will maintain two things token refiller. For our use case, the rate will be three tokens per second. And we will also have a bucket containing these tokens. And we will have a decision making service, which will check if there are enough tokens. 
Now when a request comes in, it will go to this service and this service will then check if there are enough tokens in the bucket. If there are no tokens, this service will return an HTTP 4 to 9 response to the user. This response means that the user has exhausted his request limit. Now assume a case that the bucket has tokens. This service will then take a token from this bucket and direct the request to the service. This is the basic flowchart of token bucket algorithm. This is pretty simple. To create this algorithm, you need to configure two parameters. One is the token refiller rate. The other is the bucket size, the size of this bucket. Some of the pros of this algorithm is it is easy to implement since the logic you saw is straightforward and it is also memory efficient as it does not include storing the request or storing the timestamp of the request and maintain all those logs. So that's it for this algorithm. Now let's look at the next which is called the leaking bucket algorithm. As the name suggests, this algorithm contains a bucket that leaks. I have drawn the bucket in a tilted fashion so that it is easier to explain. And we have our consuming service here. Now this bucket is of a fixed size. You can think of this bucket similar to a queue structure with first in and first out. Now whenever a request comes in, it sees is the bucket empty. If it is empty, it will get stored in this bucket or we can say it gets added to the queue and then another request comes in it sees that there is space in the bucket and so it goes to the queue and now a third request comes in it sees there is space and it enters in the queue the catch is the queue is the bucket size and it has a fixed size now if a fourth request comes in it will see that bucket is full so that request will be dropped and the user will get the same HTTP 4 to 9 response code. So this is the principle of leaking bucket. Now at regular intervals, the requests are pulled from the queue and are consumed by the consuming service. And this controls the rate limit. You can assume this consuming service consumes three requests per second. So after one second, request one, request two and request three get consumed. And my queue again becomes empty for new request to allow new request to fill to the bucket. And this is how leaking bucket algorithm works. In this also we have two parameters. One is the rate at which the service consumes the request from the bucket. So I will write it down as the outflow rate. And there is the second parameter which is the bucket size. Or I can say it is the size of my queue. Now Shopify is an e-commerce platform that uses this leaking bucket strategy to enforce rate limits in its APIs. Now talking about pros, again this is easy to implement and is memory efficient. One of the cons can be it has two parameters to configure. It would be nice if we had just one parameter which we could control. So now let's look at our next approach. It is called the fixed window counter algorithm. This is one of the most basic logic that can come to your mind when implementing rate limiter. This algorithm says that if I have to design a system with a rate limit of let's assume 5 requests per minute, I will create a timeline and this is the actual time of the day. For example, assume the current time is 201. After 1 minute, the time will be 202 and after another minute, time will be 203 and one more minute down the line time will be 204 we have a counter for each time duration we will count the number of requests coming between 201 and 202 when one request comes in the value of counter can be 1 another request comes in the value of counter is 2 now the third request comes in and counter increments to 3 by doing so, let's assume my counter became 5. Now when a 6th request comes in, I see my counter value is now 5. So I don't allow that request, I reject it. All the requests after counter is 5 is rejected. Now once the clock ticks 202, I reset my counter. And the counter then becomes 0. And I do this for every minute. Every minute I go on resetting the value of my counter. 
Now this looks like a pretty obvious solution but this has its errors. Assume that between the middle of 201 and 202, let's say at 201, 30, a request comes in. So counter becomes 1 and between this time interval, assume 5 requests came in. So the counter value will go on till 5. Now at exactly 202, the counter will reset and the counter will become 0. Think of a time between 202 and 203, which is 30 seconds past 202. And in this time interval also, we can have 5 requests. Like this algorithm allows 5 requests between this time interval. Now, if you zoom out a little bit and look at the bigger picture, you had 10 requests in this 1 minute time duration but I wanted to allow only 5 requests per minute so what happened to my restriction it didn't work because we didn't count into account the number of requests in the previous 1 minute allowing more requests here we are exceeding the request limit because we are resetting the counter at a human defined specified time and this is one of the major demerits of fixed window counter this algorithm is used if we don't want a strict bound on this request limit and most of the applications actually allow it. But to solve this problem in fixed window counter, to allow more requests than specified, we use something called a sliding window log approach. This approach consists of a rolling window where you see all the requests which were made in the past one minute and you see if the number of requests is more than 5, you reject the new incoming request. For example, assume you have an incoming request coming at a timestamp 20231 seconds and since my rate limit allows 5 requests per minute, I check all the requests that were made 1 minute prior to this timestamp which will be at 20131. If I see that number of requests made in this time duration is 5, I will reject the incoming request. And if the number of requests made were less than 5, let's say it was 3, I will allow the incoming request. So I will have to maintain a log of all the requests along with their timestamps. Now let's see how this is implemented. For this, I will have something called a log book and it will have a fixed size. For my example, I am considering 5 requests per minute. So the size of this logbook will be 5 and my logbook will contain timestamp of when a request comes in. Assume a request 1 comes at a time with the timestamp of at that time we check is our logbook empty. We see that it is not empty. So we log this time in my logbook and allow the request to pass through. Now a second request comes at a time 201.40 and I then check does so this is actually not is empty this is more of is full logic we see that it is not full so we log that time in my logbook and allow the request so I will log 201.40 in my logbook now assume my logbook is full of requests. I will just put some numbers for example. Now assume a new request comes at a time 2 hours, 2 minutes and 20 seconds. At this time I will check is my logbook full. I receive yes the logbook is full. In that case I need to check are there entries in my logbook with a time less than 1 minute prior to this timestamp. So 1 minute prior to this timestamp is 201.20. I will check for any record which is before this timestamp and I will delete them. I see that there are no such record in my logbook which means all the requests were made within the one minute rolling window. So I will have to drop this request. Now a new request comes in. Assume it comes in at time 202. 45. At this time I will see is my logbook full. I receive yes it is full. Then I will check for records which were 1 minute before this time. 1 minute before this time is 201.45. I see yes there are 2 records 
before this time present in my logbook so i will delete them since they are outside of my one minute rolling window once i delete them i have space in my logbook the size of my logbook becomes three and now i can put my new request in my logbook and i will allow this request to pass through and go to the service one of the benefits of using this algorithm is it is very efficient in managing the five request per minute duration but one of the demerits of this is since we have to store the timestamp of each request it is not so memory efficient so this is what sliding window log approach is all about and these are the basic algorithms that are used for rate limiting if you are aware of any other rate limiting algorithm let me know in the comments below now that's it for this video i will create a different video regarding how to design a rate limiting application where you can rate limit apis i will talk about functional and non functional requirements that you need to take into consideration while designing any system so stay tuned for that video and subscribe to my channel to get notifications of whenever i upload any video if you enjoyed this video like it and share this with your friends till then happy coding bye bye